A lot of digital art has been undervalued for decades. There's just so much going on in this space right now. CryptoPunks with purple hats, they're my favorite. We are looking at a very frothy investment market overall. If you're buying NFTs that are uh, representing pieces of art, Sotheby's will sell it to you. Increasingly, the younger generations are very comfortable purchasing and spending money on things that they cannot hold in their hands. We're just seeing everyone get excited about it and use it and price it, when in reality, it is just a technology. It is just a tool. An NFT is basically a new kind of file type, except instead of encoding some like video information or imagery, what you're basically doing is you are logging uh, a particular item onto a blockchain, and it basically announces your ownership of that thing to the world. So in order to buy or create an NFT, you essentially need to first have some kind of cryptocurrency wallet that usually comes in the form of Ethereum. So in order to actually then buy or sell said artwork or deed, you have to go on then a marketplace like OpenSea to trade it. So NFT stands for non-fungible token. Fungible basically means that you have an asset that is swappable for any other thing. It's a commodity like a dollar or an ounce of gold. If I give you this dollar and take another one, it's the same thing, right? It doesn't matter which dollar I have. But when something's non-fungible, it's one of a kind. It's a piece of art that can't be replicated. It's something unique to you. Ethereum has a cryptocurrency called Ether associated with it. But within Ethereum, one thing that makes it such a special system is that you can build new currencies, new tokens on top of them. But the NFT was an innovation beyond this that said, okay, now we have a token that you can't swap for any other token. It is a unique token. And your possession of this one token is special in some way. It represents something individual. So the concept is when someone releases their NFT, their token that represents whatever it is, a, a crypto kitty or maybe an NBA highlight uh, or a piece of art, then there's the exchange, the re-exchange value where people start auctioning it off. And that's when you see the value really go up. NFTs have more recently been associated with artwork, but the reality is it can represent anything. And so its proponents and its bulls really see it as a symbol of what all of decentralized finance could potentially be. So we see the concept of the NFT, you know, as far back as 2012, but it didn't get very popular until 2017. And that's when people really started building these tokens and exchanging them. When NFTs really had their viral moment, it was this thing called Crypto Kitties. Again, these little cartoons, uh, these cartoon cats that you could breed, they were one of a kind, and then resold. And some of those ended up selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that's when this concept really took off. Around the same time, there was an early NFT project called CryptoPunks, where there were these sorts of pixelated images of faces that were generated, and people started buying and selling them. And now, if you own a CryptoPunk, I mean, you're basically a millionaire. Uh, these are selling for outrageous sums of money. But really, the sort of sonic boom event was when Beeple sold his $69 million sketchbook called Every Days through the Christie's auction house. This was something that everybody noticed. That remains the highest selling NFT artwork to date. A lot of consumers see it as this get rich quick scheme, and it is for a lot of folks, but unfortunately you can make as much as $69 million, or you can make absolutely nothing and lose your money because you had to pay transaction fees and you had to buy Ether to actually create the NFT in the first place. A particular NFT is only as valuable as somebody else is willing to pay for it. And so by nature, these things are going to happen in fads, in waves, waves of interest. The thing about digital content before digital scarcity was really you couldn't truly own it. Take for example, if I bought a book on a Kindle, I could use it on the Amazon platform, but when I was done with that Kindle book or that piece of digital content, 
I couldn't do what I could do with it if I owned a book like I owned in the physical world. I couldn't give it to a friend. I couldn't lend it out to someone. I couldn't sell it secondhand. Now, all of a sudden, I could have content um, in the form of a digital book that actually I own. Really anything that is collectible and that can be digitized, now that you have digital scarcity, you can really own it for the first time in a way that you couldn't before. When you think about NFTs, when you hear about them in the press, you really hear about these huge pieces of art that have been sold, right, for 60 plus million dollars. But there are a lot of smaller NFTs you can buy. So with NBA Top Shots, you can buy some sort of highlight for, you know, a few hundred dollars if you want to and then exchange it for however much. But you can also buy a LeBron James, uh, you know, winning basket uh, for upwards of $300,000. So there's really quite a range. Fortune put together a list of the top 50 NFT influencers. We're calling it the Nifty 50. You've got Mark Cuban. He has been out there uh, constantly talking up NFTs and their potential. You also have people like Grimes, the musical artist, and a lot of electronic musicians and DJs, including Justin Lau, AKA Blau. I was really fascinated with how NFTs could apply to music. So I teamed up with my art director, Slime Sunday. We created an alias called SSX Blau, and we began to just issue audiovisual art with music that I hadn't released to the public. So it was like exclusive audiovisual content that we tokenized. Um, and the response was insane. We did over a million in sales in, in 2020 alone. So enter 2021, um, after the success of the single, I was like, well, what happens if we do it for an album and let's experiment with all these other things? And we somehow were able to generate $11.7 .7 million in the sale of um, my first debut album in tokenized form. I was like, whoa. There is something here that no one has really explored yet. V Friends is an intellectual property that has the ambition to one day be named in the same breath as Transformers and Power Rangers and Hello Kitty. So I think of it that way, but I just view it as NFTs being my launching pad, the way Harry Potter's IP was launched through books or the way Angry Birds was launched through an iPhone game. The Friends are a series of 268 currently characters, so it's a Marvel, Disney-like universe, very vast. But I love that my origin comes from NFT. You know, you think back to those Disney cells, right, that are collectible, or the first sketches of Bart Simpson. It's um, really, really cool. So they came out on May 12th, and they started off between 10 and three Ethereum, and then Dutch auctioned down to a floor. Somewhere a week or two in, they were all sold out. I think 31 million in revenue on the original sales. Very substantially successful. Right now, on the secondary market, it's been extremely active. Um, and so if you go to Crypto Slam right now, over the last 30 days, there has been $7.4 million worth of secondary sales of DeFreds. So it is, established itself as one of the more significant um, projects in the space, which I'm incredibly humbled by. You also have lots of artists. Now, these are people who have been making graphic designs, have been posting their artwork, their digital art online for a very long time, and they've built followings. They've built devoted fans who have tracked their work on places like Instagram. But, you know, up until now, they haven't been getting compensated for that work. Now, NFTs for the first time are giving these digital artists a way to make money off of their hard work. Oftentimes an artist will sell their piece for, let's say $2,000, and then something happens, they become more famous, uh, the work ends up being $2 million. They don't get any of that extra money the way the, the industry works now. With NFTs, they can keep collecting a 5% fee or, or whatever it might be each time that piece of art resells. My partner had just started getting into 3D artwork and they were meeting all of these 3D artists and all of that community was just talking about NFTs and what they were and what they were gonna make. And it was really intriguing, but I was seeing it through the lens of the 3D art community. So I didn't see many photographers, I didn't see many block artists when I joined the space. So I wasn't sure that it was the type of community for me. I just wasn't sure yet until I met 
my friend Itzel Yard, also known as Ix Shells, and she was just this powerful black woman and generative artist who really pushed me to take the leap and make space for myself in a space where I didn't, I didn't see myself represented at all. I am 17, I'm 17 years old. Right now, my, my price, my, my floor for my one of ones is about like 1.8 ETH, and that's pretty high, that's several thousand dollars. But there are a lot of people who I'd like to sell to that cannot afford that right now. So it's what a lot of artists do is they make these um, big edition pieces, which will maybe priced at um, 100, um, 100 dollars, US dollars, or something similar, so that many people can purchase them and have it in their collections. A lot of what's missing is education. I mean, a lot of this stuff is still very obscure, and to get started, you need to have some sort of awareness about tech and crypto in general. So I spent a lot of my time trying to educate other black folks, mostly black women, and um, I started chiefly with black women photographers. And since then, a lot have entered the space, thankfully, and they've also been really successful. So we spent some months creating an exhibition, Juneteenth NFT exhibition, which had a public art show as well at Super Chief Gallery NFT in New York City. But it was this room of beautiful Afro-futuristic black art shown on these big screens and projectors. And it was my debut as a curator which made me one of the youngest curators in the NFT space. And we also auctioned off the work and all of the work sold. It was a really great moment. And I think a beacon of hope for these artists who thought that maybe they couldn't succeed in the space. Almost everybody collects something or buys something to show themselves. The fact that that's all going digital, no different than all the information in the world went digital, no different than the way we communicate with each other was forever changed because of digital. The buying of things and the collecting of things is about to be very understood over the next 20 years and this is the beginning of it. The public will begin to wrap their head around what it means to own something digital and start to consider those things special because you're starting to see major influencers of culture accept this idea of digital scarcity and value it. So whether NFTs are a fad or if they're here to stay is really the billion dollar question, right? And when you think about it, we're already living in this world, right? We're already talking to people over Slack uh, and Zoom constantly, and younger people are really living it through games like Fortnite, where that is their social life, that is their, the way they interact with the, the world through this kind of Game where you, you purchase these digital entities uh, to keep on going. What a lot of crypto investors are banking on is that NFTs are going to become a sort of natural part of this decentralized financial world. They're going to become a way to signify your fandom, to show that you're a part of a certain community, a certain tribe. It is going to be validation, proof that you belong in a particular community. So many different things can be NFTs. And yes, while aspects of it will be faddish, no doubt some of it will be here to stay.